Welcome to WTIS 16, Haveroni in Botswana. I'm very pleased to be joined in the studio today by Vincent Byron, who is the Attorney General, the Ministry of Justice, Legal Affairs and Communications for St Kitts and Nevis. Mr. So thank you very much indeed for being with us in the studio today. Thank you very much for having me, Max. Now, I'd like to start off by talking about the Measuring the Information Society report. It's our flagship report. It's just been released. And uh, I wanted to find out why is this report important to your country? Well, um, it gives a measure of how well we have done over the last year in relation to the um, investments in the use and access of ICTs by our citizens, our people, and it does impact upon our economic performance. It um, justifies in a very tangible way the strides that we have been made we have made economically. We have exhibited, for instance, uh, uh, plus three, um, four, five percent growth over the last year. This next year we um, estimate that will be above three percent. So that in terms of our management of our economy, our finances, and the type of work we have done in our various sectors. This just helps to reinforce the fact that as a small island developing state that we have had prudent management of our affairs and I think as I said this morning that um, uh, at the award ceremony I think it can act as a beacon not just for St. Kitts and Nevis going forward but other small states that it can be done that we can sit at the table and show that we have the wherewithal to um, add to the quality of life of our citizens and the world in general. Now you've done tremendously well, I think, yeah. in this report. I think you, you can uh, have share with us <laughs> the fact that you, you've uh, you actually won two awards. Uh, That's right. And you, you've had a, an incredible success. I just wanted to find out what have you done differently? Well, I think that we are part of a small sub-region sub in the Eastern Caribbean um, and we signed the treaty um, somewhere back in the late 1990s and so from 2000 we have been on the one regulatory framework. Um, we passed the Telecommunications Act in 2000 and so the legal framework that established that it was this group in, and for us, our own local National Telecommunications Regulatory Commission set the platform on which we could have built on. Um, it liberalized our telecom sector, and so whereas previous to that we had had one monopoly, one major company that um, had more or less a monopoly, the fact that we now have um, competitors in the environment who have been able to invest and so have our people respond. Um, we feel that they have a good sense of education and they are very well connected through cell phones, um, access and use of telephony as well as access and use of broadband. And you came away with two awards? That's correct. Um, this last year, we have done very well. There have been where our, uh, our um, service providers have invested in 4G technique, um, 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 equipment and so on. So that has been a major advance, as well as the, there has been uh, much competition in the broadband, um, fixed broadband in particular, but also very much so in mobile broadband as well. And so we moved up the rankings. We were 54th in 2015, and that um, ranking for the 2016 saw us move 20 places worldwide and up to 34th. And we are very proud um, of what we have done as a people. And um, we think that is a foundation that we can build on as we move forward. I should also point out the ranking was not just 
the, the awards were not just for the rank, the change in rank, but also when you combine a number of different indicators that the question was also one of a, an award for the value of, of, of what we have done as well. well congratulations for that. Yeah. Now, I wanted to find out, you've been here for a couple of days now. Yes. What's the message that you think you'll be taking home from this year's WCIS Symposium? Well, the networking um, with fellow ministers and uh, people in the ICT uh, sector has been exceptionally good for, for me, um, for one. But the actual focus of the symposium on the question of measuring um, the developments in ICTs has been particularly of, of significant use. Um, we note, for instance, the need to constantly measure um, what we do for households, what we do with individuals as well, so that you can get a sense of the gaps that need to be filled. Um, we know, for instance, that we have done quite well at home in the linkages of our secondary schools. All of them are linked by broadband. And so in education, we have done significant work. We have also have work to do in our hospitals. We are working on a hospital information system to link our three, four hospitals at home. And so once we can do the measurements of the growth, the access, the use of broadband and other forms of this in the sector, it allows us as a government to make the type of policies that could um, help us to go even further. And next year, we hope we can even move, move further up the, the, the ranking. Um, once, so the constant, the need to measure what we do as policymakers, the need to be, um, and with indicators that are standardized, that uh, with statistical data that is used around the world for comparability, so that we just don't see where we have done ourselves, but where we compare ourselves with other economies worldwide, that that would be of a great benefit to us. Now, you've partially covered it, but I wanted to ask you my final question. In what ways are ICTs assisting uh, St. Kitts and Nevis in the drive towards the attainment of the UN Sustainable Development Goals? Well, one of the goals, clearly, of the uh, Sustainable Development Goals, the SDG, has been that we leave no one behind. That um, our, all of our citizens be able to benefit from their, uh, their, their place in our societies. And so whether you are elderly, uh, infirmed, differently abled, whether you are a young person, we all should be able to access the benefits to be, de to be derived from the ICT. And so we have to ensure that we have the proper legislation and regulations in place to keep a strong framework. We have to ensure that we invest in those areas that we have lagged in. And so I, I think very much so, it is something that we as a country, we as a government are very much committed to do, to ensure that all our people have uh, a quality of life that would assist us to be one of the most beautiful places in the world to live and work. And oh. we hope and hope that for people to visit as well. <laughs> we welcome you at any time. Well, thank you very much. We, we wish you the very best of the future. Yeah. And so, Byron, thank you very much for joining us yeah. in the studio today. And uh, we look forward to catching up with you again very soon. Perhaps uh, yeah, another 20 good. places higher. That's right. <laughs> the next one. Thank you very much. Thank you very, thank you very, very much, much indeed. Thank you very much. Thank you. Very much. Thank thank you, very much. Thank well. you. And okay. uh, thank you for joining us. And please check out our other videos on the ITU YouTube channel. Thank you. Great stuff.